Understanding System Efficient ESD Design, or SEED, methodology, shown is the IEC 61000-4-2 standard setup. The IEC 61000-4-2 pulse is the most stringent of the ESD tests. The goal of SEED methodology is to shorten design cycles while protecting system ICs from ESD failure. Secondary ESD protection is always present but this only partially protects the device from an ESD stress. Using onboard primary clamping helps achieve the goal of full protection. Several primary clamping devices can be used. Shunt inductors are frequently used, as well as transient voltage suppression devices, or TVS for short. For RF antenna port applications, shunt inductors, block capacitors, and TVS components are used the most. Suppression devices give different results. As shown, TVS diodes reduce the voltage better than spark gap or polymer varistor devices. But note, each application is different. To protect the IC device in your application, a polymer may be enough. Let's review in more detail suppression device placement and configurations. PC board location and design is important as it alters performance. Pay attention to the ESD component grounding and not just the RF isolation in the ground scheme. Positioning the TVS diodes close to the antenna provides the best outcome. This example shows a high-pass filter using shunt inductors in a pine network configuration. The shunt inductor network suppresses most of the pulse, however not enough to mitigate damage to the IC. Using a two-stage approach with a TVS diode near the antenna is more effective. The high-pass filter with the TVS device further suppresses the ESD current pulse. Now let's look at a seed example. SEED is a simulation strategy done prior to building your system-level PC board layout. Simulation tools such as ADS, SPICE, or AWR are used for SEED. Simulating your system transmission line pulses and PC board layout help estimate your system's ability to suppress an ESD event. Let's step through a SEED process example. First, model the IEC 8 kV stress. Use this circuit to model the IEC pulse. Note, the values shown may require tweaking in your analysis. The simulation waveform should conform to the IEC waveform from the standard. This model will be used to simulate your design robustness. If not already done, input your 3D PC board layout files and system design into your simulation. Also, input transmission line models, tuning models, and transmission line pulse IC pin models. Using this data, run a simulation showing what the IC device stress level will be. If the stress level exceeds the amount the IC can mitigate, external ESD protection is required. Let's assume your current design needs protection. Let's also assume you require a TVS diode to properly protect your IC device. As an example, let's gather and compare the TVS diode transmission line pulse, or TLP, model data. In this example, the orange line represents the IC in this circuit. The analysis shows component one is your best component choice as it triggers at a lower voltage in the snapback region, making it less likely to threaten the system design by clipping the signal performance. Now input component one TVS model data into your simulation. Again, run a simulation model checking the IC device input pin stress level. If the ESD stress is sufficiently suppressed, like this example, then begin your final system level PCB layout for testing. Following the SEED methodology will make it more likely you meet IEC ESD testing with fewer design cycles. So, to recap, secondary clamping is not as effective as primary onboard clamping. The IEC 61000-4-2 testing is the hardest ESD test to pass. TVS positioning is more effective when placed close to the antenna. Transmission line pulse data is used to verify the optimum device. 
For more information on seed methodology, go to our blog posts on this topic found in the Design Hub at Corvo.com. Visit Corvo's Design Hub for tools, ebooks, and blogs. We're your partner for the toughest RF challenges.